Hello everybody, Avid Assistant here and welcome to another video. And in this video we're going to be looking at the new Looper Transmit plugin for Avid Media Composer and seeing how it can really simplify the process of using the Looper I.O. platform for remote collaboration and playout from Avid. Right now, just before I get into the Looper I.O. side of things, I want to make a wee note on a Avid's panel SDK which is Avid's relatively new software development kit that enables third-party developers to make plugins specifically for the platform to natively work within the paneled user interface. Now we all know that one of Avid's main drawbacks for years in comparison to others like Resolve, Final Cut 10, Premiere, has been its lack of third-party support. It's been a bit of a closed system with regards to plugins. Now we have had very specific types of plugins like AMA plugins from camera manufacturers and other companies allowing us to ingest file formats that aren't natively supported as well as add export options. We've had a suite of specifically AVX audio plugins and we've had some limited effects work plugins mostly coming from Boris FX. But all of these plugins have been adding functionality to specific areas and have been accessible only within specific areas of the program. The idea behind Avid's panel SDK was to allow developers to create tools that would fit specifically within the Avid user interface in its own panel that we can dock and move around anywhere and have up at the same time as things like the effects editor or source browser and other things. They don't have to be embedded within an existing Avid tool. And as you can imagine, since this Avid panel SDK was announced, there have been a number of developers around the world working on their own plugins to more natively access Avid Media Composer users. And I'm planning on several videos looking at these as they become available. But the first one we're going to look at today, as you'll already know, is the Transmit plugin from Looper.io. Now, long-time viewers of this channel will know that I am quite a fan of the Looper.io platform. I've used it in several of the jobs where I've came on as a first assistant editor and I'm working remotely, as well as jobs where I've been the editor and I've been editing remotely. I've used Looper as a remote playout solution to collaborate on edits when the director has been up the north of Scotland, you know, a few hundred miles away from me. And I've also used it for the same purpose with uh, where the director was on the opposite end of the planet in New Zealand, as far away as you could kind of possibly be from me. And we were able to have live sessions almost like we were in the same room, working on the same timeline with them seeing everything that I'm doing in Avid. And I've talked about Looper in a couple of videos on the channel before. Once in a video talking about remote working solutions and, you know, pros and cons of different ways. You know, and I mentioned this as a part of my favorite way of remote working. And in another video that went through the entire setup process of Looper from creating your room, sharing the link and getting it working with Avid Media Composer. A video that this Transmit plugin will now make obsolete since you no longer need a separate application installed alongside your NLE in order for Looper to work. Previously, we were using separate encoding and streaming software like LBS or later LDE in order to get the, the NDI stream from Avid out and streaming across the Looper platform. Now, however, with this Transmit plugin installed, we can access this functionality directly within our Avid user interface. Right, so just as before, this will start inside Looper where we'll create a room you can configure the settings of your room however you like, whatever suits best for your project. I'll let you explore that. And in order to start a call with your director or whoever you're collaborating with, you can share with them the, the room details by hitting the share button here and you can share via email or just copy this link right here. So once that's all sent out and you're ready to begin, you can go ahead and enter your room. Looper will ask your permission to use your camera and your microphone, stuff like that. That is perfectly fine. Now, I will say you could have the actual call part of this up on, say, a laptop or something next to your Avid. It doesn't actually have to be done on the same machine. But once you approve which microphone and camera you're using, do a little wave so you know that I'm doing this in sync. Happy days. Then we can hit go to enter our room. And so this is our Looper room here. Um, this is where we'll have our playout from our Avid and everybody on the call will appear here on the left. And we have various controls here and on the side, a live little text chat and diff different things like this. But this video is to highlight the Looper Transmit plugin. So let's circle back to that. You can see here it's waiting for a live stream source. We have to connect our Avid playout to this room so that everyone on the call can see our playout. And to do that, we need something called a stream key. So we can get our stream key by going over to these little three dots here on the right and then clicking on stream keys. I'm gonna have mine blurred out here since you don't really need to see the stream key. But the important thing to note is that all you have to do is come here and click this little icon here on the right to copy it to your clipboard. And then we can go back to Avid and enter this into the Transmit plugin. So I've jumped back to Media Composer. 
I'm in a project here. And since I've already downloaded and installed the Looper Transmit plugin, I'm going to go to Tools and Looper to launch it. So you can see this brings up Looper in its own little panel that I can move anywhere I want within the Avid user interface. I could dock it directly here if I wanted to, or I could hide it within an existing panel structure by holding the Option key as I drag it around to dock it here. So we've got lots of flexibility where we sit this within our workspace setup. And it doesn't really take up that much space either. This is all we really need for all of our controls. But to get our stream going, I'm going to come into here where it says stream key, select all here and hit paste. So I've now pasted in my stream key that I've got from my room. And all I need to do now is start broadcasting. So to do that, we come down here to the little hardware icon, which is where we control any and all playouts to Avid, whether you go into a client monitor or streaming out through NDI. And I'm just going to right click here. And you see we have a new option here called Looper. And I'm just going to click select to enable that. <coughs> so that is now enabled as our ticked playout option. And you'll notice that as soon as I click this little button here now, it will enable my streaming of video and audio here in the, in the transmit plugin. So I'll click that here. And video and audio are now ticked, which means that our stream is live coming out of Media Composer. And as soon as I hit start streaming, it will appear in my call here um, as a source. So anybody in the room in the call would be able to see my Avid play it. So I'll demonstrate that by hitting start streaming. And I'll just shuffle around some video here. And now you can see if I tab back to my call, here we have it. In fact, I'll actually jump back to Avid and I'll play this video. And in my browser, you can see in the call, the video is playing. Everybody on the call would be able to see this like this and we'd be able to view this all together. And so if I paused on any frame, um, anybody in the call would be able to use this drawing tool, for example, to draw on the frame, to highlight things, to have a discussion, we'd all be able to review visual effects and color and, and the edit, for example. We'd all be all set, ready to go to begin our collaboration. Now, one thing that's new here that we couldn't do before using the other uh, Looper breakout applications like LDE or LBS, is we can actually stream the entire Avid user interface using this. I've got it currently set to program, so it's streaming out my Avid playout, my, my video feed. But if I set it to GUI, and then toggle back to the call, you can see it's actually streaming out my Avid GUI. And this is far superior to just sharing your screen since it's going to be running through a stable looper playout and it's also not going to show anything you don't want it to see. It will only show the Avid GUI. It's not going to show any notifications that pop up or anything from any other application or even if you tab out of Avid to do something else in a browser or whatever, it will only be showing to everyone else on the call your, your Avid GUI. And by default, we can actually set this to auto, which means that as soon as I start playing video, it will be showing the playout, it will be showing the video on the call as we had before. But then as soon as I pause and I start doing other things, it will show the Avid GUI. So if you're working away to do a little edit or a little tweak that someone on the call has just suggested, they can see what you're doing. They can see you that you're working and they're not just left on a paused image for ages. Well, they can see your face in this call here just furiously working and not knowing what you're doing. Now, while that would be you pretty much set up at this point, let me show you the few other controls that we have in the Transmit plugin to control things without having to tap back to this call. So you'll see here we can control the volume of our Avid playout for everyone listening on the call. Now, if you didn't have a client monitor, like, like, a, like a Blackmagic breakout box or something to, ha to have a full screen view yourself, we can use this video monitor control to show us a full screen looper playout window um, as we work and as we skim along um, for us to have a full screen play out as well. Uh, we can set this to be a single window or to take up an entire um, other monitor. If you have multiple monitors selected, this is my other monitor that I've got selected here. If I select the same monitor, it's just gonna default to a window since it can't override the, the transmit plugin itself. But I like to use a Blackmagic Ultra Studio breakout box for my client monitor. So I'll leave that set to none. We also have a very similar control for audio, which has to say the same controls as what we had for video. And we can set the quality of our stream. Now, this is something that I'd probably tinker with before beginning the stream. Well, I pretty much always keep this to four megabits since I think that's a pretty 
good quality stream without stressing it too much and it works perfectly fine for most things. If you find yourself uh, streaming this to someone who's maybe extremely far away or they don't have a great internet connection, maybe maybe they're on ADSL or you know they're somewhere more rural where they don't have access to a great connection, you can step down the little stages that we have here of two and a half megabits all the way down to 1.2, which will yes, give you a lower quality stream it, but it should help for playback stability, which if you're reviewing an edit as opposed to reviewing a, you know, like a grade or um, an online master or visual effects or something, is probably more important getting stability for that play out and playback but as i say i pretty much always just keep this set to four megabits now at the very top here as well in the transmit plugin um, there is direct links to your looper dashboard and the support page um, this help button which should take you pretty much to the same place in the event that you do have any issues but i do think that these controls are fairly simple and really easy to use and pretty much ever since i got this transmit plugin installed i have been setting up the room you know just double checking my camera um, tweaking that so that you know my, my framing's a little better getting things set up here and then I tab back to my Avid and I never leave the Avid for the duration of the call. You know maybe at the end when we're, we're stepping away from the Avid and we're just having a general discussion then I'll tab back to my browser and I'll just have the call there and we can chat to everybody and we're, we're worrying less about what's on here and we're just chatting directly with everybody that's on the call but whenever we're doing anything to do with player, I can just stay within the Avid the entire time and enable and disable here and switch between what I'm sharing, either the player or the GUI, and it enables me a lot greater control. Now, that is a full rundown of the Looper Transmit plugin for Avid as it currently stands. I know that Looper are currently looking into a number of different features and different things that they can add or tweak about this. And on that note, I will say that my number one thing that I would love to have added in here um, is within the Looper panel, Personally, I would just love to have the entire call. I would love to have this in here. Um, since I would just have this tabbed in a panel, like for, for example, behind here, behind my composer, something like say like this, which would allow me to just tab like this, tinker with any controls, um, and then come back to my Avid, work away, work away. And then, like I said, when I have to have those general conversations at the end of the call where I just want to talk to people and I just want to see the chat, I can just click there and stay within my Avid environment. I could set up everything from here and just manage everything from here. That would be my one little wish list thing I would like to see added is a way to have the actual call part of Looper and, and see the people I'm talking to, which would mean that once things are set up, I would never have to leave Avid Media Composer for the duration of the call. However, with that being said, having to just tab over to another workspace and see the call in Looper, isn't really a whole lot to ask and it is fairly simple. So it's not it's not a big deal. It would just be a little wish list for me personally, what I would like to see. So there you have it. There is the Looper Transmit plugin for Avid Media Composer as it currently stands. This is the first version of it. it as, as I mentioned earlier, it's still in beta. I'm sure there'll be newer features added to it in the future. Looper are always welcome to feedback. So if you think there's something that should really be added to this or a change made, please do reach out to them and suggest it. But before you do that, I'd highly recommend you download the plugin from the Looper's website. The link will be down below in the video description and try it out. But as for us here with this video having a look, that is us for today. Thank you very, very much for watching and a special thank you to all my patrons on YouTube and Patreon. And I'll see all you guys very soon in another video as I'm testing out more of these panel SDK plugins that keep cropping up from more manufacturers, including a very interesting one for Jumper. So stay tuned.